Uh, I'm Charlie Nager. I'm a professor of obstetrics and gynecology at the University of California, San Diego, and uh, the current uh, interim chair of our department. Uh, I specialize in female pelvic medicine and reconstructive surgery. I'm here today to talk about pelvic floor disorders. So pelvic floor disorders are disorders of really the bottom of the abdomen. Uh, they're disorders of muscle and connective tissue. The muscle and connective tissue surround the bladder, they surround the urethra, uh, they surround the rectum and the anal canal, and they surround the uterus and the cervix. And when you have a disorder of these muscles or connective tissue, uh, which commonly occur uh, after childbirth, then you can have disruption of the processes uh, in the pelvis. And, and some of the common things we deal with are urinary incontinence, uh, accidental bowel leakage or disorders of pelvic prolapse. Urinary incontinence usually is from for one of two reasons. Uh, the one that we commonly see is something called stress incontinence, which is a problem with the urethra where the urethra has been now poorly supported by these connective tissues and muscles and so that it funnels open when there's any increase in abdominal pressure that occurs like with coughing, laughing, sneezing, straining. And, and when you have this condition called stress urinary incontinence, you'll leak urine with any of these activities. And it can be quite debilitating and can significantly interfere with your quality of life so that you, you no longer do those activities that you previously loved to do, to do. You may no longer play tennis, you may not, no longer run, you may no longer dance or exercise because of the embarrassment associated with the leakage. But fortunately, we have good treatment solutions for that. The other type of incontinence is called urgency incontinence, and it's not a urethra problem, but it's a bladder problem. It's sort of a brain bladder control problem where the bladder is contracting involuntarily and, and the brain's not able to stop it from contracting. And, and those treatments are, are different. They're, they're usually not surgical, but they're exercises or medications, or we have some uh, third line treatments for, for that. Uh, the other condition that I wanted to talk about is prolapse. So, so prolapse is when you have a weakness in these muscles and connective tissues such that either the walls of the vagina or the uterus are starting to fall down uh, into the vagina or through the opening of the vagina. Um, one of the most common conditions is, is called a, it's commonly called a cystocele, but it's, it's really anterior vaginal wall prolapse. And, and uh, really the, the problem is the, is the vaginal wall and it'll prolapse out through the vagina so that the women experience complaints of a, a bulge or heaviness and it can be a discomfort and sometimes when it's very far out it can prevent uh, them from again from doing a lot of the things they do and it causes this this discomfort the uterus can also drop down that's called uterine prolapse or if the patients have had a hysterectomy they can have what's called vault prolapse the top of the vagina coming down uh, if the back wall comes down that's called posterior vaginal wall prolapse and in that condition sometimes the rectum bulges in the vagina and it may not empty well and it actually uh, sometimes women have to use their fingers in the vagina or on their outside of the vagina to help them with their bowel movements to help them evacuate so these these conditions are, are quality of life conditions and they uh, significantly interfere with a patient's ability to, to carry on a, a normal life and Fortunately, we have a lot of good ways to diagnose these problems and to treat these problems. Some of the treatments are, are simple conservative things, exercises, pessaries, which are devices that fit inside the vagina to hold everything up in place. And, and um, sometimes uh, we need to do surgery and, and surgery is often very effective at treating these. Uh, the final condition is uh, accidental bowel leakage. That's, that's often due to a weakness in the anal sphincter. That can be disrupted during uh, a birth injury for that and we will um, uh, again evaluate that and recommend either conservative or or other interventions to treat this but uh, I just want everyone to know that uh, these conditions are really common uh, it's uh, estimates that it affects somewhere around 30 to 40 percent of the population and they're readily managed and they're readily treated and you should see a urogynecologist or a pelvic floor specialist a specialist in female pelvic medicine and reconstructive surgery to have your problem evaluated and treated.